personnel involved here. So having said all that, let's go ahead and dive in and talk about service discovery and navigation. So we're going to look at two main things here. One is the OSLC service provider catalog, which is the catalog provides a listing of you know, the OSLC service providers that it knows about and what URLs we need to use to reach them. Um, specifically on you know, the Rational Jazz servers, we have a, a catalog for each of the products and then a service provider for each of the project areas. But it's up to the OSLC implementation to decide you know, what the scope of a catalog is or what the scope of a service provider is. But it's usually um, you know, scoped to something like a, uh, some sort of container, a project, or a project area, or a, or a product, something like that. Um, the service provider document, of course, has some URLs that are useful for um, figuring out how to query for resources, create resources, and the OSLC delegated dialogues. So let's take a look at that. Um, the first place I'm going to go here, switch over to my browser, sorry, is I'm putting in the URL for, you'll see some history here because I've been playing around with this stuff. Um, you put in the URL for the catalog OSLC catalog for an RTC server. So one, one good question is, you know, how do I figure out the URL for that catalog? So each OSLC implementation has to, has to find a way to advertise you know, where its catalog is or possibly where its service providers are, the catalog being the usual way. Um, so that, that's sort of an implementation uh, dependent thing. You need to uh, have enough information about the provider that, you're, that you want to deal with to know where uh, where its catalog is at, what URL it's at. I'll be talking a little bit later when I talk about the Jazz Root Services um, protocol, how to get the catalog there. But for a generic OSLC implementation, um, you will need to know what URL the catalog's at. Two very standard headers that we have when dealing with um, OSLC services are the accept header, application RDF XML uh, being a uh, very common one to use, application JSON being another, and application XML being a third, although you know, not necessarily supported by, uh, by every application type. RDF XML is the one that's um, guaranteed to be supported by all OSLC implementations um, based on the core specification. And OSLC core version 2.0, um, that's just to distinguish it from some of the earlier OSLC implementations to make sure that those that support one, the 1.0 specs and the 2.0 specs know that I want the 2.0 version of things. So those are the basic set of headers. So I'm going to send this request. And so what did I get back here? I got back a bunch of HTML. Um, this is a common thing when dealing with the Jazz servers if you're not authenticated uh, with the server. So you'll get back, this is basically the HTML for the, the login form for a Jazz server. Um, I'll talk some in more detail about authentication uh, later on here. but. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to go ahead. My browser session needs to be authenticated uh, with the server before I can actually uh, issue any requests against protected resources. So I'm going to go ahead and log in here. I've got a RTC server up and running here. So once I'm logged in, if I reissue this request, again, it's to the catalog URL, and I do a get request to it. Now I get back some RDF XML. What the service provider catalog um, contains, the main thing it contains is these two entries down here, the, the list of service providers. As I mentioned before, for this implementation, there's a service provider for each project area. So I have two project areas here, one called Jazz 4 OCM, and one that's the um, standard sample application uh, that comes with RTC. So that, that's you know pretty simple for the catalog. It's basically just giving me this URL right here where I should go if I want to talk to this service provider and discover what services it offers, then I need to go off to this URL right here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this URL. And this is going to take me to the service provider document for this service provider for this project. So again, I just issue a, a GET request against that URL with my accept type. 
and I get back, it's, it's quite a large document. Service provider documents can be simple or they can have a lot of information in them. I'm going to try to simplify this one a little bit for us. There's two services in here. There's one right here. And the domain for this service, you can see, is CM-X. That means change management experimental. So this is something that RTC 4.0 added, you know, where they've got some experimental services going on here. So for the purposes of this presentation, we're not really interested in them. So I'm going to collapse that piece of it. There's a second service in here, which is for the domain you know, CM. This is the OSLC change management uh, service that's in Rational Team Concert. So this is the service that we're interested in. You can see, I'll, I'll try to minimize the scrolling too much, but uh, I'll have to do some of that. You can see that each of these entries here are for creation factories. Um, this implementation of the change management specification provides many different types of change requests. So it has um, you know, a defect change request, a task change request, a plan item change request. So what we're seeing here in these entries, these creation factory entries, is the URL that we need to go to in order to create each one of these um, types of change requests. And I'll give an example a little bit later on on creation of resources. But the important thing to note here is that we're getting URLs on how to create um, different types of change requests. And using the OSLC usage statement here in the creation factory entry, it's telling us which type of change request that URL is for. The other important thing, uh, potentially important thing, is this resource shape entry. It's telling us, you know, here are the fields that you have to provide to successfully create a defect. If I would, if I would do a get on this URL, which I'll do a little bit later on, um, it's going to tell me what attributes I have to provide to successfully create this type of change request. So the combination of knowing where to go to create a change request, um, what type of change request I'm creating, and the, the shape of the change request, what attributes I need to um, be able to create it, the combination of those three things is what's going to uh, allow me to successfully create um, new change requests in this service provider. I'm going to scroll down a little bit further here and then stop. Okay, <clears throat> towards the top of my screen now is the OSLC query capability. Um, this section of the service provider document is telling us what URL we need to go to in order to be able to query for resources. So, you know, one of the most common scenarios folks have is, you know, I want to be able to uh, run queries. I want to be able to either get all of the, the resources that the provider knows about, or I want to be able to, you know, run queries uh, and filter and get some subset of them. So that's something we'll uh, definitely take a look at here in a minute. But the query capability, uh, again, the query base tells us what URL we need to go to to issue these queries. And the resource shape will also tell us, you know, what attributes, if we did a get on that, it would tell us, you know, what attributes we could expect uh, when we actually ran these queries, you know, what, what the resources that we queried actually look like. The, the final thing in the service provider document is you can see a, a whole bunch of them again are these creation dialogues and selection dialogues. And these are, in OSLC, these are called um, delegated UIs or you know, uh, selection and creation UIs. This is basically if you wanted to invoke a UI that uh, the service provider um, makes available to you for selection or creation of resources, this gives us the information that we would need to um, need to know, basically the URLs that we would need to hit in order to be able to pull up a creation UI from RTC that allowed us to create different types of change requests. That's why you see multiples again. Just like the creation factory, we have creation dialogues for different types of things. Here's one for a defect. Here's one for a plan item. Um, same thing with selection. There will be multiples of those. So the, the important thing here is you know, the, the type of the resource that the um, that the dialogue is going to be for, so this one for a task, and then again what URI we would invoke a get on in order to pull up that dialogue. And that's really, you know, th there's a lot of entries in here, but that's mainly, you know, what we're interested in in the service provider document. We've got the creation factories that let us um, you know, uh, tell us where to go to create things. We've got the query capability, 
which you know allows us to run queries, and then we've got the, um, the the delegated dialogues for selection and creation of resources. If we want to do that in the UI versus doing it uh, programmatically, I'm going to pause here, and before I move on to the next section, um, if there's any questions, please just go ahead and jump in.